What is overactive bladder and what are your treatment options? By the end of this video, you're going to know what overactive bladder is and what first, second, and third line therapies are for overactive bladder. I'm a urologist and I see hundreds of women every single year with overactive bladder. Mostly their common complaints are urinary frequency, urgency, or leakage on the way to the toilet or leakage with a sense of urgency. Very different than stress incontinence, that's a different video. Stress incontinence is I leak with cough, sneeze, laugh. So urge incontinence is I, I have a severe urgency to use the bathroom. I know where all the bathrooms in town are. I know where all the rest stops are on my road trips that I take. I get up too much at night. I feel like I urinate all the time. So that's an overactive bladder, usually caused by bladder muscle overactivity. The experts consider this to be a chronic disease in the same way that diabetes or hypertension is a chronic disease. So it's very rare that I can make it go away, but we can decrease it enough so that it's not controlling your life and your symptoms are manageable. So first line therapy for overactive bladder is behavioral therapy. Watching how much you drink, the caffeine or the bladder stimulants that you drink, limiting your fluids two to three hours before bedtime and not drinking when you get up to urinate at night. So nocturia or getting up at night is getting up two or more times a night. Uh, first line therapy is don't drink a lot of fluids or especially alcohol before you go to bed. Uh, so first line therapy, behavioral therapy, timed voiding and pelvic floor exercises. So strengthening and lifting the pelvic floor to have more control over the bladder and more control over the mind bladder connection using biofeedback or training techniques to be able to decrease the urgency signals. So step one, first line therapy, behavioral fluid management. Number two, medication management. Usually these are anticholinergics. Uh, another class is uh, mirbetric. So what these work on is the storage capacity of the bladder and helping it uh, squeeze less or helping it store more. I have a personal bias. I don't love these medications. I think they have a lot of dry mouth and constipation side effects and a lot of women are bothered by this. In addition, I don't think they work as well as the third line therapies, which we'll talk about soon. But most insurances will make us fail two medications before you can go to third line therapy. So we are going to talk about medications and do a prescription uh, just so we can say we've we've tried them and they haven't worked. And some people, they work great. But that's kind of my, my personal bias is they uh, are associated with cognitive decline in elderly. I don't give them to anybody who has an uh, increased risk of falls or a fall history. And also a lot of women are bothered by uh, dry mouth and constipation. So second line therapy is, is medication management. This is a one pill a day. Um, so it's not curative, it just helps manage the symptoms. So third line therapy. You have to have failed behavioral therapy and medical management to get to third line therapies and there are three third line therapies to talk about. Number one is Botox or onabotulinum toxin. This is used usually twice a year so it's very minimal work as far as seeing the urologist. Uh, certainly you don't have to take a pill every day so that's very nice. I have a separate video on Botox if you want more information um, but non-surgical, minimally invasive, some of the happiest people that come to our procedure center are our Botox ladies because they know it works so great. But a 30% complete dry rate for urgent, urge incontinence, 80% improvement in frequency urgency symptoms. So it uh, works better than medication alone. N number two would be sacral nerve stimulation. Medtronic makes the inner stim device, which actually works by calming the nerve to the hyperactive bladder down. What's great about this treatment is it'll last for years, no pills. Uh, so for really low maintenance um, and long lasting therapy, the inner stim device works really great. They've done some head to head trials comparing Botox to inner stim. Looks about equivalent. Uh, I kind of have my own uh, personal preference depending upon an individual symptoms on which one I go for, uh, but they're both very, very effective and I'd say more effective than the medications. Uh, the other one for third line therapy is tibial nerve stimulation which is a little like acupuncture needle down into the tibia, uh, tibial nerve, which calms down the bladder. And it's not my favorite. It's not as effective as the other third line therapy. And also it requires a lot of visits to our office. So once a week for 12 weeks and then maintenance about every three months. So that's usually more visits than a woman wants to have, uh, but it is another minimally invasive option for overactive bladder. So share this video with somebody who has an overactive bladder. If you, can't sit through a movie or your bladder's controlling your life instead of you.
think about first, second, and third line therapies. Uh, I do a lot of third line therapies because I am a urologist and that is my job. Certainly any physician or primary care provider can trial the medications first. Great pelvic floor physical therapists uh, if you need help with the behavioral therapy or, or work on the pelvic floor muscle training. So share this video, look at my other videos on inner stim and Botox if you have any uh, interest or give our office a call. All right, thanks for listening.